On July 27, 1996, there was a forced takeover of the Indonesian Democratic Party PDI, DPP, office on JL Diponegoro 58 Central Jakarta, which at that time was controlled by supporters of Megawati Sikarna Putri. The raid was carried out by Sir Yadi, the general chairperson of the PDI Congress version in Maidan, who was assisted by the police in Abri. The riots spread in several areas in Jakarta. Several buildings and vehicles caught fire. The government at that time accused PRD activists of being behind the riots. As a result, the PRD was disbanded, activists were thrown into prison, a number of other activists were kidnapped, arrested, and forcibly disappeared. As a PRD activist, who is considered subversive to the state, Thukul was picked up by the authorities at his residence in Solo in August 1996. However, Thukul disguised himself and managed to escape wearing a helmet, leaving his wife Sipin, along with their two young children. Since then, Thukul has been alighting from one place to another try to save himself from being chased by the authorities. While in hiding, he still wrote several poems, some of which were for his two children. Between March to April 1998, his tracks are unknown. When the Suharto regime was overthrown on May 21, 1998. Thukul had not yet left. Finally, the wife reported to the Commission for Disappearances and Violence, Contras, in April 2000. The disappearance of Thukul prompted the Surakarta Literature Fosrum, FSS, led by the poets Sojawan Leek and Wawak Hesti Prabowo. To hold a solidarity forum, with the title Thukul, Go Home which was held in Surabaya, Mojokerto, Solo, Semarang, Yogyakarta, and Jakarta. Until now, Thukul has not been found. I don't know what really happened, no one understands. The case seems to be covered up, and there is no news from the government to reveal the Thukul case. Thukul has never been involved in criminal acts, corruption, or repression that harms the state, but instead fights for justice and advocates through poetry. However, his right to life was taken away without a clear legal procedure. Ouija Thukul works. The words in Thukul's poetry give different interpretations of poetry. If art is defined as beauty, then in the definition of a Ouija Thukul literary art, which can be interpreted as beauty, His life was filled with bitterness, starting from his background, which is only part of the marginalized, to his activities which are filled with bitterness in fighting for justice and fighting the dirty injustice of the rulers. The style of language in Thukul's poetry does not contain the beauty of figurative words and similes. He explores the social reality of the marginal people through his poetry, and it is impossible to express it with dictions full of romantic figureheads. In simple language, Thukul wanted everyone, from the intellectual and proletarian circles, to be able 
to understand it clearly. With simple language, his poems are still echoed until now as, if they are a kind, of curse, for the unjust rulers. In his poem, he says, There are three Thukula poems, that are popular and become, mandatory poems, in mass actions. Namely Warning, Sage Akswara, and Bung and Timbak, all three, of which are in the anthology, Looking for Landfield, published by Manus Amikai, The Netherlands, in 1994. However, in fact the anthology was published, by a collaboration between, Kitloff, and publisher Rasta Mitra, Jakarta. The name, of the fictional publisher Manasamaikai was used, to avoid, the New Order government's ban. In addition, other poetry collections such, as poems, of Pelo and Darman were published, by Taman Budaya Surakarta. Ouija Thukul Award Of course, with the various twists and turns, of his struggle, his works, and his life stories, Thukul has received several awards, from various institutions. Thanks to his poems, Thukul was invited, to read poetry, at the German Embassy, in Jakarta, by the Gouda Anstitu in 1989. In 1991, he appeared reading poetry at the, Poetry Night Market, at the Dutch Cultural Center, Jakarta. In the same year, Thukul along, with W.S. Randra was awarded, the Wordheim Encourage Award given, by Wordheim Stichting, from the Netherlands. In 2002, Thukul was again awarded, the Yapti Amhian Award 2002, an award from, the Foundation, for the Study, of Human Rights, for people who have contributed greatly, to the efforts, to uphold human rights, in Indonesia. In the same year, a documentary was made about Ouija Thukul, by Tinikim Polsky, a tribute, to his incredible stories. Once again, the body, of Ouija Thukul is missing, but his poetry, of resistance has not been lost. He once said, if we indulge in fear, we will prolong, the ranks, of slavery. Thukul's poetry is harsh, but not savage. Thukul's poetry is full, of accusations, but not blasphemy. This will be seen in, his poem entitled, I Demand Change, ahead of the June 1992 elections. That's the complete biography, of Ouija Thukul that we present, from reliable reference sources. Hope it inspires.